So sometimes the area is actually constipation underneath, so it's very important to, to consider that and look at that. And truly, really if you start thinking about health, so healthy colon, like I said, is a key to health. It is not like is there high blood pressure when it like obviously when we have gas and bloating and nausea and and you know this, this cramping that's that's definitely a problem of the colon. But what I want you to start thinking about is other illnesses like I said whether it's skin problems, joint problems, heart problems. Um, you know, a, a, any really chronic autoimmune illnesses specifically, they do start in the colon. And part of it is because not only the inflammation of the colon, but part of it is the lymph system, right? And the reason I connected these two is because they are connected. So lymph, there are actually two parts to the lymph. Um, as blood flows through the whole body and it's enclosed system, there's also lymph that picks up like the remaining 10% of the fluid from the rest of our body and it picks up these big molecules and picks up toxins from everywhere and then brings it to, brings it to the circulation, brings it back to the liver, brings it back to be processed and it kind of moves it through these lymph nodes to make sure the lymph nodes kind of check through it and go, okay, this is healthy, this is unhealthy, here we have to create an antibody. So that's part of the lymph. And there's this other part of the lymph, which is really the lymph, like lymphoid, it's called lymphoid tissue, it's part of the immune system. And did you know that there is about 60 to 70 percent of the immune system is right here in our gut? Would you have thought that? 60 to 70 percent of our immune system is right in our gut. And there's a huge reason for that because, like I said, our gut has this amazing function to not only digest the food and get the nutrients, but to really protect us. And it's, it's protecting us from all this bacteria. There's, they say anywhere from 10 to 20 times the amount of bacteria in our colon as there are cells in our body. Yes, yeah, so there are about, there are about 50 trillion, minimum, 50 trillion cells in our body. That's a lot, right? Can't even imagine. And there is 10 to 20 times more bacteria than the cells in our body. That's wild, huh? That's a lot. That's a lot. So the good news is it's not all bad bacteria, and we'll talk about that. The good news is that there is something called the good bacteria, the probiotics. But really, go back to the bacteria. So much of, there, there's bacteria everywhere. You know, fungus, spores, it, we're breathing it, we're touching it, our cell phone supposedly is the most bacteria containing <laughs> device that we have. Our body is, you know, we live in this world. We, we, our body knows how to deal with that. But all this bacteria comes in through the food. And big piece here, it's very important, is the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, the HCL. HCL kills a lot of bacteria. And again, what have we done in our society? Because we have digestive problems, right? We have problems with the gut that transfers as GERD or reflux. And instead of working the big picture, we are shutting down the HCL and lowering that. So not only are we not breaking down our food and our protein in the stomach, we are really decreasing the ability to fight this, to kill this bacteria. So more bacteria is coming into the small and the large intestine, creating fermentation. And then you add on top of it medication, any medication really, but specifically antibiotics. And then you add the food that we eat that again is you know, doesn't really have the, the, the life, life to it, doesn't have the, the alive good bacteria, it's very much processed, and has a lot of antibiotics. So non-organic meat and dairy and eggs, they're filled with antibiotics. They actually, I was kind of amazed too, I didn't really want to believe that, but antibiotics, they, they um, create weight gain. So what they started doing, apparently, is 
you know, yes, the growth hormone that was being injected to the animals uh, makes the animals sick, so they actually need antibiotics to fight illness. But also, they were giving a low dose antibiotics to create weight gain in farm stock animals. Which really, those antibiotics, they stay in the, uh, they stay in the food. And then when we take them in, what it does, what they do, all this, you know, unhealthy diet and these antibiotics, they take down all the bacteria temporarily, right? So if we're sick and we have, you know, flu or we have some kind of bacteria somewhere, let's say in the lungs, the antibiotics go in, they kill the bacteria in the lungs for the most part, and then they start killing the bacteria in the colon. So they kill the bad bacteria and they kill the good bacteria. And there is supposed to be 85% of the good bacteria to protect us. The good bacteria dies very easily with antibiotics and lots of stress and other medication. And it takes a long time to replenish it. And in the meantime, the bad guys are growing and smiling and flourishing. And, and that's really, for the most part, where yeast comes in and candida. And if you have some, you know, there's this a whole different lecture in and of itself. But I'll get to that a little bit. Um, so one of the biggest pieces of creating health in the colon is, and again, we won't have time to go into all of it, but all the lectures that we've talked about do contain that, is, so you think about eliminating as many of the toxins as possible, right? So elimination and avoidance is the first one. And then the second one is, how can we bring healthy nutrients and healthy food and a live food that's actually filled with the good flora, which would be a lot of, and high fiber diet and really nutritious diet in to keep the health, to keep the balance. And, and, and the big piece would be the food, really. So it's either that food that ferments and sits in your body, like the meat and like the french fries, which you probably don't eat, and all the processed food, or it will be the vegetables, so it will be the beautiful salad. Right, so it's a whole different story. Not only does it give you roughage and fiber, it gives you the nutrients to to fight anything that's going on, to calm down the inflammation. So the avoidance, and then bringing in the good and beneficial nutrients and food. And then the third is you ask, how do I get rid of it? Right. So. If you are really healthy, you're sleeping great, your energy is 12 out of 10, <laughs> your skin looks beautiful, your eyes are vibrant, um, you're eating fabulous organic diet three times a day, have three bomb moments a day, that's a beautiful picture of health, right? I still have ways to go. <laughs> but it, that really is, and I want to tell you, that really is health, and that is what is possible for all of us, and that is the truth of who we are, is to live in health. And it really is to look at the different picture, right? It's, it's not to take a bunch of medications and start suppressing the symptoms, but start looking at the core, at the center of, of where, where the illness originates, which is the connection of all the organs, but for the most part, it's going to be right here in the gut. So how do we take this unhealthy gut and make it healthier while we have the toxins out, we bring the good in, and over here I have this possible infection. You know, I'm not going every day, I have some bloating, I have some illnesses, I have some chronic illnesses. How do I get it out? So you're going to, and you know, all these illnesses that you probably don't, can or don't read, but they're all really part of it part of having unhealthy colon. So how do we get it out? What do you think? Right, right. So fiber is a big one. Water is a big one. Mm -hmm. If you can get an alkaline water, that'd be great. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. So hydration, absolutely, right? Because if we're dehydrated, more impaction happens. So water, half of your body weight in water is, is definitely a must. Then the fiber. So half of it, that's in ounces. Like, so let's say if you're 120 pounds, you would drink at least 60 ounces of water. I try to do a little bit more, but, you know, water definitely. And then when you have 
when you have more fruits and vegetables that contain water, you're getting some water there. But ultimately, we live in Arizona, so we do need water. Does it have to be organic? Which one? The fruits and vegetables. Okay. So I, I believe <laughs> that whatever you can do to eliminate as many toxins as possible, do it. Really, you are, you are paying, you know, extra dollar for organic strawberries, or I don't know, but you are paying for your health big time. If so, you, if you put um, white vinegar, one part white vinegar to nine parts water, does that help get rid of the... Okay, so I gave you all this little tiny cart, and it's not to promote Picasso's, even though they do have organic food. But this is really, take it with you when you go shopping. All of you should have it. It's the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. So right now, if you're not buying organic, it's going to be very hard to go and all of a sudden buy everything organic, even though I would highly recommend that. Okay? But if you can't, look at this. The Dirty Dozen, those are the most toxic, meaning they contain the most Pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, larvicides, I don't even know what all, you know, is in there, but a lot. So when you take these 12 and you eliminate the non-organic, means you buy these organic, they say that you can actually decrease your um, exposure to pesticides and herbicides by 80%. Just by doing those 12. Okay, so it's very important to do those 12 for sure. If you can do all of it, you know, I would do it. Here's the thing, like if you get the clean 15, let's say your avocados or sweet potatoes or grapefruit, you definitely want to wash them. And you definitely you can wash them in this, you know, vinegar and, and or you can wash them in non-toxic detergent to get the, or even bananas, you wash your bananas. But the part when you just wash your vegetables with all these cleaners is you washing what's on the top. You're not washing the, the spraying the GMO seeds, right? The genetically modified seeds, the non-organic food is. You're not, you're not washing off all the, um, what are they called? Um, like, you know, not just pesticides, herbicides, but what they do to actually have the fertilizers, they're more toxic to have the seeds grow. And then it's being sprayed on all the time as it's growing, the bloom, right? And then is it, so it's being sprayed on all the time, and it's actually inside the fruit. It's in the seeds, in the, it's in the fruit, it's in the vegetables. Yeah, yeah, so it's, you can't really wash it off. And then the part, which is very important, and I'll spend the time on it, that pesticides and herbicides and insecticides, they are not water soluble. And that's really important to know. They're sprayed on to stay on, to not be washed by the rain. Smart, right? Except not for us. It's very harmful for us, actually. So we wash all these fruits and vegetables, and, you know, we're not really, I mean, unless you have a really good detergent, an organic detergent, you're not getting the fat soluble part out. So so I highly, you know, I'm a believer in organic, even though today it's, it's very difficult to get 100% clean and healthy food because of how we live and the cross contamination. You want to do, you want to do whatever you can because that's our health, right? It's, it, again, I, I wish I could like take everything together and put it, you know, in one hour lecture to have you understand that, but every little bit that you do, it makes such a big difference. Okay, and that's, I really want you to know that, and, and it's the, that's where I believe medicine is going, is where you will be empowered, and I want to see that before I leave this planet, where you'll be empowered to take care and take charge, and you'll know how to take charge of your body. And the big piece is, is knowing all of this information and, and asking for the organic food when you go to, to the grocery store so they know there is a demand. You know, if McDonald's, if people wanted ca organic kale salad at McDonald's every single day, if 10 people wanted that, I guarantee you they would make it, right? It's the demand. We need to start asking. It's not going to be these big corporations all of a sudden serving organic kale salad at McDonald's. But the, the power is inside of us, and it's the knowledge. Like, I know what I know, and then 
I'm going to get centered in my body and listen to my body and what it wants, and then I'll take the action to actually take care of myself. So, <laughs> so this, I want you to really, yeah, I gave everyone a one, uh, piece. And um, you can actually go um, online and just put Dirty Dozen, and um, it, will, it will get you to the website where they got it from. But go shopping with this and just start there. You, you're going to make 80% difference right here. OK. What's that? It changes every year, so watch, yeah. And then always, like, the, the foods that you can peel, um, you want to wash, and things like avocados and onions, those are usually less toxic than those, like the strawberries, raspberries, and all that. So to go back to this. So we're talking about the avoidance and then putting the good food, the organic food, so you can avoid the, the toxins. And then you were saying fiber, right? So fiber comes from whole food. It comes from vegetables. It comes from you know, nuts and seeds and, and lots of greens. And it comes from rice and whole grain, like quinoa and amaranth. And, and here I want to just kind of step aside a little bit and talk about whole wheat. You know, there's been so much um, created about whole wheat is good for you. First of all, if you take white bread and whole wheat bread, it's almost the same, right? It's really, it has been, whole wheat is really not that much healthier. You've got to think about whole grain, like, like the barley, like the amaranth, like the quinoa, like the brown rice. That's more the whole food we're talking about, not a flour that has a little bit of the, the grain in it and the bread is created out of it, or, you know, whole grain pasta, something like that. So you think more of the whole grain. And then, for the most part, because we, most Americans really only get like minimum fiber in our diet, so adding fiber in, and you have a little bit in your notes, but I love flaxseed. Flaxseed is a great powder, uh, um, fiber. Psyllium husk is another one. And then chia seeds, C-H-I-A, that's kind of a newer fiber, very nutritious. If you can do one to two tablespoons of those every day, 